You know, for months I've been wondering where the WWE was going with this whole Emelina concept, this whole Emelina character. Was it going to be a build-up for an actual legit relaunch of Emma as Emelina? Was she going to do something different other than just be an in-ring performer, kind of lost in the shuffle? Or was this just one big, epic, inside joke in WWE and it was just reeking of troll factor? You know, I, I could see where it could come out any number of ways. Except for what ultimately happened. No matter what we say about the WWE, in terms of Raw being too long, they have too much product out there, they oversaturate their product, whatever the case might be. The fact is, no matter how much the ratings have declined over the past several years, the WWE still does a sizable cable television rating on Monday night. And if it wasn't for bitter, angry white people watching Fox News in great droves, most Monday nights, the WWE would be in the top two, maybe three at the worst, depending on what they're running up against, in terms of the nightly cable television ratings. What I mean by this is that the WWE has a ton of primetime cable television air available. Even with that said, though, it's still precious time for a company that still does very good television ratings on cable in the grand scheme of things. There are a lot of networks that would kill to have one show do what the WWE gets with either Raw or SmackDown. So you've got to maximize that time. You've got to make the most of that time. And you would think if you're going to greenlight running literally months of vignettes about a character that you have some type of vision in place, some type of plan in place, and that there's ultimately going to be some type of payoff. Because again, no matter how much time you have to fill, and even if it feels like you really struggle to fill that time, it's still valuable time. You want to put something on the air, in theory, you would think, that would give you the potential to get somebody else over, to create a new star, to create some type of name, to do something. Not sit there and have months of vignettes and a load of buildup for one big troll. And that's exactly what happened as we found out Monday night. What was the big master plan? Emelina has arrived, and now she's going to be made over back into Emma. Now, this is the type of crap. Even if you want to say in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't matter. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe you don't give a shit about Emma or Emelina or anything like that. But... There's a deeper underlying issue here that is very representative of the problems of the WWE's product today and why they continue to lose their audience. For months, you devoted precious television time, even if it's 30, 60, 90 second uh, clips at a time. That's still valuable, precious television time. That even if you have an abundance a lot more than other companies and a lot more than other television shows, you still have to maximize it. You still have to make the most of it because you have a great built-in advantage with all that time available to you. You don't want to waste that time. Time is the most precious commodity we have. How many wrestling companies around the world wish they had the type of primetime television deal weekly that the WWE does? And here's the WWE spending months for one big troll just to waste precious television time. And after all this time of building up this big debut of Emelina, a lot of fans, you couldn't blame them if they sat there and said, I feel like the company has wasted my time. And that's a big problem for the WWE now, is so much of what they do ultimately feels like one big circle jerk, one fantastic waste of time. And why did this all happen, and how did it get to this point? Apparently there have been some reports that Emma was not bought into Emmalina and what the direction and what the vision was, and therefore in some of the rehearsals, it affected her performance, and the WWE decided to kill it. Now, maybe there's a part of it that Emma wasn't really feeling it. Maybe there's a part of it that's just frustrated in general about previous usage. But it probably ties more into the fact that she's been wrestling for a number of years now, and as a result, she feels her best way to potentially get over, the best way to make herself a star, is by being an in-ring performer. Taking her outside of that comfort zone is something that she wasn't really willing to do. And in a way that makes sense, but in a way it completely and totally doesn't. 
you know, life sometimes is about taking lemons and making lemonade out of it. Sometimes in the real world, in the working world, you get put in adverse, borderline, shitty situations, and you're told to eat that shit, like the taste of it, and it better come out smelling like roses when you crap it out. And you know what you got to do? You got to deal with it. You got to sit there and be motivated by the fact that they threw this at you, and you're going to sit there and you're going to turn it around on them and shove it straight up their ass. I think of Dusty Rhodes and the Polka Dots as a perfect example. No matter how much Bruce Pritchard or anybody else wants to sell it, it was a fucking rib on Dusty. He took it, turned it around, shoved it up Vince's ass, and he got them goddamn polka dots over. That's what you do. And sometimes that's what you have to do. And it comes down to this whole mindset, this mark mindset that has creeped into the business of wanting to be an in-ring performer or having to be a wrestle, and it's all about the matches and blah, blah, blah. And it's not. And that's a major problem with where the business is now, in particular WWE's business. It's too much about the in-ring product and not about the other things that complete the entirety of the package that is professional wrestling, sports entertainment, whatever you want to call it. It's the same damn thing in a lot of ways. And it comes down to a bigger fundamental issue. And that is that not all women in WWE need to wrestle. They don't. This is not some sexist diatribe bullshit. This is just a fundamental belief of trying to get the most out of the people that you have. Having too many women on your roster when you only have a limited number of slots on television each week and on pay-per-view each month that you're actually going to feature them is not good for the women or the product. First and foremost, the WWE doesn't really know, after all these years still, how to actually book viable female professional wrestling. They don't. Something they've never been good at. Frankly, they never will be. On top of that, it, even though I start to wonder about this more and more based off of the reactions I see from the hardcore fans on the internet, the majority of the WWE audience, no matter what anybody tries to say, is still male 18 and older. And does that 18 and older male audience want to see a bunch of flat as a board, stiff as a feather, girls grapple around and wrestle like the boys for 10 or 15 minutes a night? Or do they want to see sexual type of content? Do they want to see bra and panty matches? Do they want to see big tits and fat juicy asses? Ultimately, wrestling is a man's world, fair or not. But there is still a place and a very big place and a very big role for those women within the WWE and the business as a whole. However, without coming across sounding like a 1950s guy here, that place doesn't always have to be in the ring. And furthermore, becoming more like the guys doesn't help the women stand out. If anything, it just makes them blend into the schmas of suck that already is the male roster of the WWE. If you're featuring the same as the men and you're presenting them the same as the men and they're trying to work the same as the men, that is not good. The men are the men, the women are the women. And what helps those women stand out and be different and be unique is the fact that they are women. So by doing some of the things this company does with their women, it makes them feel like men. Frankly, some of them fucking look like men. Charlotte. And as a result, none of them really stand out. On top of that, just from a shelf life standpoint, a lot of these women in professional wrestling don't necessarily last as long. That's for a variety of reasons. Their body can't handle the night in, night out grind. They start getting opportunities to do other things outside of wrestling, perhaps more easily than their male counterparts do. Some of them want to have families. Some of them want to get just do other things. So when you look at the grand picture, you just can't sit there and be so fixated on having to be a, a woman in WWE and having to be an in-ring performer. Because, again, there are limited spots and opportunities. You look between Raw and SmackDown, there's maybe two feuds on each show generally. So that means at most, potentially six to eight women are being featured at a given time, which means potentially half of your women's roster between the two shows is potentially not being utilized, that's a problem. And when you look at wanting to be a wrestler, a female wrestler, you have to understand that while you don't have a ton of competition in terms of sheer size of numbers, the numbers game is not incredibly friendly to you for being able to get a chance or an opportunity. Because there's so few spots and all these ladies are competing for them and lobbying for them. On top of that, 
you get limited featured segment exposure, you get limited main event exposure. Oftentimes, no matter how the hardcore fans want to spin this now, you're still the filler crap. You're not cruiserweight filler crap, but you're still filler crap. So, so why would you want to be necessarily associated with that? And on top of all of this, you know, and I know I've talked about this a little bit on Twitter over the past 24 hours or so, and gotten some agreement for sure, and definitely some disagreement, but I think it's fucking stupid to sit there and say that all of these women need to be wrestlers. We don't need more wrestlers in WWE. We need more characters and personalities. There are plenty of people in the company, male or female, that can do flips. They can do kicks. They can bump around and fly around, go over the top rope, go through the middle rope, do a lot of crazy stunts and a lot of bullshit. But what most of them can't do is captivate an audience with the power of their personality and their abilities on the goddamn microphone. That's what we need more of. And for those that are actually able to embrace that and actually able to make that happen, they're much more likely to stand out as a character. Like I look at two examples of this are Enzo Amore and Xavier Woods. And Xavier Woods is solid in the ring. But what gets him over is the power of his personality, his ability to talk on the microphone, and the fact that he is just naturally a fucking character in real life, and it transforms itself onto television. Enzo Amore, he can't really go in the damn ring, but who gives a shit? And he looks kind of funky and fucked up, but goddamn, the dude has charisma and personality out of the cheetah yin-yang that he has. And he could go on the microphone. A guy like Enzo Amore, if you're trying to break him in as a pure in-ring performer, he's probably sitting down at NXT another 24 months before he gets future endeavored and you never hear from him again. Because of the fact, though, that he was a personality naturally and he worked at that and he honed those skills and he honed that part of his craft, now he goes up to the main roster. He's more one of the most exciting things you get to see on a weekly basis on Raw. So to me, if anything... Would I want to be like everybody else? Or would I want to be unique? Would I want to be different? I'd rather be unique and I'd rather be different. We have plenty of people that can wrestle. We don't have many characters and we don't have many personalities. And to me, for what was going on with Emma, you know, not the blowing bubbles Emma that the company was behind, not the evil Emma toiling away at NXT that surely a lot of you are going to geek out about, but at the end of the day, how that fucking work out? Injury or not, doesn't matter. Here was a chance for her to do something different, to stand out above the crowd of the women in the WWE. And for whatever reason, stupidity, ignorance, stubbornness, lack of confidence, she failed to take the opportunity and seize it and make the most of it. You know, sometimes the opportunity you get is not the opportunity you want. But when you get that opportunity, by God, you've got to make the most of it because that opportunity may never come again. And when I look at it from a female performer standpoint in WWE, you've had many of the biggest WWE women stars in the history of the company who started out as non-wrestlers and some of them stayed non-wrestlers throughout their entire career. You look at Miss Elizabeth. You know, I know when I bring up Sherry Martell, people talk about, well, she was the AWA women's champ. At the end of the day, in the WWE world, that didn't exist. That didn't happen. She was sensational, Sherry. She was scary, Sherry. And she was the shit, man. She was awesome. Luna was fucking incredible. Everybody she was associated with was better. She was an incredible performer. An incredible character. Sunny. She wasn't really a wrestler. But she made a lot of money. She became a star. She got to do this. She got to do that. And then she did everybody. China started off as the bodyguard for Triple H and Shawn Michaels. Later on, she became an in-ring performer. But starting out, what got her fucking over was this big bad bitch that you thought could legitimately beat up over half of the fucking WWF roster of the mid-90s. And which is something because there were a lot of roids floating around at that time. And those dudes actually looked like fucking men. Like real men's men. And you thought she could fucking go toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of them. Lita started off associating with S.A. Rios. And then eventually the Hardy Boys. And then she spun off into her own ring career. Trish Stratus was sitting there barking like a dog in her bra and panties. And escorting other teams down to the ring as she learned to become a performer. You know, Sable. 
I don't know if she ever became a good performer, but by God, she was a fucking white-hot star at one point in time, no matter what Jim Cornette or anybody else wants to say. That bitch had some drawing power. And it was because she stood out. She was different. She didn't just sit there and try to wrestle at first. That came later. She focused on being a personality, being a character. While her voice was nasally and annoying, and I know something about that, and I don't think she had a great charisma or anything, the shit worked. It got fucking over. And, of course, it always helps when you have handprints over your tits. You know, Stacey Keebler, Tori Wilson. The point being is you've had some great female performers in WWE over the years, especially as wrestlers. Like, I love Ivory. I would bone the shit out of her to this day. But she's not remembered in the same stratosphere as somebody like a sensational Sherry or Miss Elizabeth or a China or a Lita or a Trish Stratus. Yo, Jazz was a good in-ring talent, but she's not remembered in that same ilk. Michelle McCool was good in the ring, but she's not remembered like these other ones. A lot of these females, women, were bigger stars because of the fact they either A, didn't wrestle at all, and they focused on doing other things, or B, they started off doing this, and then they became wrestlers later. And I think it comes down to a fundamental question. And this is the one I pose to you. If you were a woman in WWE, who would you rather be? Would you rather be Lana, or would you rather be Carmella? To me, I think the answer is Lana, and it's not even close. And it's not just because of the dumb stuff they're doing with her and James Ellsworth now. But you can clearly see where instead of focusing on Carmella being a personality, being a character, she kind of gets just stuck in the schmaz and she's another chick trying to wrestle. It's that simple. Like the whole thing they did that sabotaged her from the very fucking beginning was she's down at NXT with Enzo and Big Cass. It's all part of their shtick. Then they bring them up to the main roster, and she's not associated in any way. Imagine how much more over Carmella would be right now in a, in a really good way if she just came out and she was associated with Enzo and Big Cass, maybe was their manager, and didn't wrestle at fucking all. How over is she now when she's actually working matches? I rest my fucking case. Furthermore, she's most certainly not more over than Lana. If Lana had started off as a green as goose shit, in-ring performer, she probably flopped the fuck out. But she didn't. She got a character concept from Dusty. She worked at it. She honed it. She focused on working the mic. She focused on being a character, being a personality, how she would interact with Rusev, how Rusev would interact with her, and not just in the damn bedroom. And now you look at it, even when they don't do the best with Lana now, you know, Lana's still over. And it's not just because a lot of dudes want a boner. They ultimately want to go where Rusev goes now. I grant you. But think about how much more better situated long term Lana is to where as you want to start to graduate away from her, gravitate away from her being that manager type, that ballet type, she can gravitate towards being more of an in-ring performer and she's already mastered the concepts of working on the mic and being a personality and a character. She's so much more ahead of the curve because all this time she can practice in-ring stuff on the side. But this is her focus. This is her job. This is her time to get over in this way. Whereas so many of these other girls have to sit there and try to struggle to get over based off of what they do in the ring. And all the while, they're not paying attention to the ancillary stuff that could really help kind of paint the picture together. And some of them don't get over in the ring, and then they lag even further behind in the personality, character, and mic skills department. You know, and on top of that, Lana can do WWE movies. She does Total Diva. She does other projects. And yes, while I grant you, there are plenty of the women that actually do wrestle, that do things like the Total Divas. It's, again, when you look at it at the grand scheme of things, Carmella's going out there and bumping and, you know, risking injury and doing all this stuff. Whereas Lana is probably right now making more money and not having to take any damn bumps. Is the love and the passion for the in-ring stuff 
reach such a mark level that we forget again that this is a business first and foremost and you get into the business to become a star and make as much money as possible. For me, in my opinion, I would rather be the type that would sit there and get over this way with limited damage to my body that could potentially lengthen my shelf life and open me up to possibilities for ventures outside of the WWE. Not all of these women need to wrestle, and that's not a bad thing. It's not. Just because the WWE doesn't effectively use valets or managers now doesn't mean that they couldn't or they shouldn't, because they most certainly should. On the guy's side, you look at somebody like Paul Heyman. Part of the reason Paul Heyman stands out is not just because of the ECW crap, not just because of the fact that he manages the Beast Incarnate, the Conqueror, Brock Lesnar. It's a very simple fact is he's pretty much the only male manager of note that the WWE roster has on Raw or SmackDown. Being the only one, he naturally stands out. Whereas if an Emma sits there and wants to be on Raw, what does she have that is so distinguishing to bring to the table that is going to help her get over above somebody like a Charlotte? or a Bailey, or a Sasha Banks, or a Nia Jax, or anybody else, or if she was on SmackDown, you know, what does she have that's going to help her get more over, or over to a similar level of Alexa Bliss, or a Naomi, or a Natalia, or a Nikki Bella? Huh. And when you look at the grand scheme of things, even if you're on that roster as a wrestler, that's no guarantee for anything. Like Alicia Fox has technically been a wrestler, where the whole time when she's given those moments and opportunities to show personality and character, she can do some good things. But they keep going back and forth between her being a wrestler and being a valet, and while she's still technically, I guess, kind of listed as an active wrestler, you see how she's been basically saddled with some dumb shit in the cruiserweight division. So we ended, she ended up being a fucking valet slash manager any damn ways. And she's supposed to be an in-ring performer. So just because you wrestle, I mean, this is a type of dumb mark shit where you squander a golden opportunity that the company provides you for at least, if nothing else, television time and opportunity because you don't want to get behind it? Because you'd rather wrestle? I mean, it's just dumb. And to all these fans that are sitting there saying, well, she could get over in the ring and she could do this and she could do that. Okay, maybe she can. But maybe she fucking can't. What would be so wrong in doing something different with her? What would be so wrong in going in a different direction with her for now? Because if she can get over in a different direction, how much more over will she actually be when she combines that with her in-ring abilities? And again, it fundamentally comes down to this fucking thing of this obsession with professional wrestling. Professional wrestling has become such a fucking nerdgasm that dudes don't even want sexuality out of their women anymore. They don't want these women to look good. They don't want them to dress good. They don't want them to act well. They just want to get in there and fucking grapple. And not even like a lesbian jello pudding fucking wrestling type of way. Like we want legitimate athletic competitions out of the women. You are men. It is time to start fucking acting like it. Again, not every one of these women needs to be a fucking wrestler. Furthermore, not all of these women should be wrestlers. And in the case of an Emma, I just can't believe that so many people are so opposed to her doing something else. It is ridiculous. So that way, what? She could debut as an in-ring performer, try to get over, it doesn't really work, and get sent down to NXT. Oh, that's right, that already fucking happened. Idiots. This is, again, it represents the fucked up place this business is. Where the guys, instead of wanting sexy women to do borderline lesbian stuff and other things that a lot of wrestling fans used to be into, we actually want legitimate athletic competition. And we try to pass off fours and fives like the fucking dime pieces. Nah, fuck that shit. 
Not all women in WWE need to wrestle, and frankly, everybody would be better off if they didn't.